Hi everybody, uh, this is Alan from Alpus Group and uh, I'm going to explain in this uh, video how Alpus evaluates any sites uh, typically. So we just run through the uh, process and uh, there are associated case studies um, which um, illustrate how we do this, uh, but this is just the process to start with. Um, how we go about evaluating a site for property development, ascertaining the likely gross development value of the site after transformation from its current low value state, where it may be unused or underused, into high value for new purpose, which is usually residential because these um, values residential are usually the highest um, that, that you can get, um, particularly in uh, urban areas. There are other examples where we will show you how we evaluate uh, industrial and warehouse sites as well, which can also be high value, but this particular example has in mind a transformation from a relatively low value commercial, such as retail use, into relatively high uh, value residential. So Alpus also assesses all the likely costs of the development and did, did up these from the gross development value. Uh, less the, the profit margin, of course. So we we would have a profit margin of around about a third, which is um, includes a, a risk element, um, uh, so that we arrive at what we think we can afford to pay for the site. Bear in mind this is a very rough calculation, and we don't have um, drawings. We don't have a full survey of the site, so. It might be that once a full survey of the site is uh, carried out, there may be some unforeseen problems which um, we need to include in our estimate for um, the costs uh, sufficient that we can allow um, to solve these problems. Otherwise, if we cut our costs, budget costs too fine, then we could well en end up having paid too much for the site. Uh, increased construction costs and associated fees and uh, all of a sudden we've got no margin or we could lose money and that's something which we definitely don't want to do. So the first point is to establish the site location, the specific address and the postcode and the reason we do this is so that we can use uh, software uh, to um, identify all the relevant facts about the site. So um, we use Nimbus maps and uh, this gives an aerial view of the uh, site and its uh, perimeters, the boundary location, the built areas on the site and also the heights of the buildings on the site. It also gives us information about uh, the property owner and uh, if it's a company about other properties that they may own. Um, we can also evaluate from Nimbus maps the um, uh, similar residential values in that area uh, of the site and we can also identify such things as the planning history for the site, the planning policy for that area and we can identify whether the site is in a floodplain uh, or not um, and uh, whether the, the buildings are listed uh, or in a conservation area. So these are all very important factors to uh, know about any site. So we don't actually have to go there um, and see, although we, we may, if we're particularly interested in a, in a site, we may well drive there to see it. But we can do a lot of the research work remotely using Nimbus Maps and another software called Property Data, where we can look at um, sourcing sites and also evaluating developments on, on that particular site. Um, uh, but both sites, uh, both softwares need the precise address and postcode, so that, that's very important that we establish those accurately. Um, and sometimes a site can be part of a current demise, so the exact boundary or boundaries that are being considered needs to be ascertained and the area of the site needs to be calculated. This is very important for the costings that um, we're going to um, perform for the uh, evaluation of the uh, value of the site. So second step is we use Nimbus Maps to enter the specific address and the postcode and identify the title holder, that's the owner. If required we can get a copy of these title deeds from uh, HM Land Registry, you've just got to pay a fee of £3 to do that. 
So Nimbus maps will show the site area and the built areas on the site, the number of such buildings and the area of each floor level and the height of each building. Um, and then we look at other uh, layers in Nimbus maps and we can see whether the buildings on the site are listed or if it's in a conservation area. We can check if the site is in a flood zone of a river or the sea. Uh, we can also check the planning policy in the current area to see what the local planning authority envisages for, for that area. Uh, so quite a lot of information we can glean from Nimbus maps. Uh, we can look at uh, current planning applications in that area and whether they've been approved or rejected or under consideration or under appeal. This may be relevant depending on what purpose we want to um, make this particular site. Um, and then, as I mentioned, we can get the current average residential value in a particular area from Nimbus maps. Uh, so step three, having obtained basic information from Nimbus Maps, uh, we use property data to calculate the possible gross development value of this site. So we input the address and the postcode completely. We use the information gleaned from Nimbus Maps. We can input the gross area before development and after the development. Thus we can calculate either new additional construction area if it's an extension or refurbishment and extension. and um, Alternatively, we can calculate for a complete demolition and a new build on the site. Both be completely different calculations, give completely different answers for the value of the site. But we, we need to know what we're going to do on the site. Um, so we may well carry out a number of different calculations and we may then assess which is the um, likely costs and the best returns for each option and we can conclude on a preferred option to move forward with. So step four, um, we then use some other proprietary construction estimating software to double check the property data figures. Um, we were obviously very concerned that in the particular area of the site that we get accurate construction costing so we double and triple check um, our workings and uh, we use this other uh, proprietary estimating software to, to do that. Uh, step five, we carry out a preliminary risk assessment on the project. So our preliminary risk assessment will identify the top five to ten risks on the project and allocate a percentage for contingency for the budget. At this stage, the contingency of a minimum of 10% must be allowed and it could be a greater amount since designs are not yet available and we're at feasibility stage effectively for the project. Um, step six, we check finance and funding costs. We allow a provisional amount of 10% per annum for interest rates. Um, so if it's going to be likely a longer um, period of construction or planning, submission, approval, design and construction, then we need to increase this figure accordingly. But with permitted development, which is the sort of examples that we'd be looking at, um, then we would hope because we don't have to go through planning approval, we know we can do the conversion from low value commercial to high value residential under permitted development rights. So we, we haven't got that same level of risk that there could be further planning delays while we convince the local authority about what we want to do. We've already got the right to carry out the permitted development. Um, and we look to uh, the property data figures for finance and they calculate based on 4% interest per annum which is in our experience insufficient so if you can get funding at 4% then you, you can of, of course build that into uh, your calculations but um, uh, as far as we can see it should be more like 10%. So an example of a gross development value feasibility calculation uh, which thus calculates the site value from the gross development value um, less all the development costs. So um, here is our uh, possible purchase price. This is what you can afford to offer for the site and get the sort of margin which we indicate at the bottom there which is around a third. Uh, stamp duty is likely to be £50,000 for the purchase, legals £5,000 for the purchase and what we need to note is that there are other legal costs associated with selling off converted units so this could be say 14 um, units on this side so we've got 
14 times two and a half thousand pounds plus that so it's going to be roughly 42,000 pounds has got to come out of the profit so already the profit um, margin there is uh, going to be uh, less than what is shown on this calculation uh, architects fees we've allowed 11% of refurbishment construction costs which is 108,000 pounds of course if we've got the refurbishment costs uh, too low and the actual costs are higher we could well end up paying more for fees as well as losing out on that figure there which we've budgeted for construction so at the moment we've got 1.899 million <coughs> pounds for costs including the site purchase um, we should allow a minimum of 10% for contingency which is 189,900 10% per annum for finance costs assuming a one year turnaround on the job 189,900 giving total costs of 2.278,800 um, we take the local average asking price um, and we check it on property data we check it on nimbus maps and right move um, on the market and zoopla and uh, we put in our assessment um, uh, for this purpose um, which we think is in the region of 325 pounds a square foot giving a total value on the site of 3.087500 um, taking off the costs of 2.278,800 gives a profit margin of 808,700. So at this stage, because these are very preliminary calculations, we don't have designs, we don't know what problems there may be within the building that we haven't fully surveyed. So one example of a problem which could arise is uh, asbestos being within the building. And if this is encountered, then first of all, if we know about it, we should allocate specific figure for it in our calculations. And um, otherwise, we should be very wary that uh, buildings of this sort of age from the 50s and 60s could well have asbestos in them, in uh, plumbing insulation, uh, heating insulation pipes, in um, roof spaces, and so on. Um, so we need to bear in mind that we don't want to cut our profit margin too fine because um, you don't need many uh, problems on a job to uh, erode that margin significantly and what we want to make sure is that um, with this uh, volatile uh, construction market where costs are increasing um, dramatically they increased about 25 to 35 percent last year um, that we don't end up underpricing on uh, developments and offering too much for the site, finding that our costs are too high and therefore we don't make any money on the developments. The whole waste of effort and uh, even worse if we were to cut things too fine and end up making a loss. So that's why we operate with these sort of margins and we put a lot of effort into checking and cross-checking the sort of costs that we envisage would be involved in development of any site. So I hope that was useful. Uh, we'll follow up with some other case studies. So that's all for now. Cheers.